So in a moment, um, folks, we're going to be getting onto our mats and we're going to be enjoying moving our bodies and um, feeling a little more comfort and scope and range with our, with our bodies, hopefully. But first of all, I do need to just mention that um, my twins, Cameron and Katriona, have given me huge support um, with filming this. And Cameron has added a PayPal feature to the videos so that those of you who are finding these, these, these videos really helpful um, and until we can get back to live classes, um, that if you would like to make a donation um, that would help us to sort of keep, keep producing these videos, um, it would be very much appreciated. So just check out on the link that Cameron has um, provided here, there is a, a PayPal uh, feature for um, safe and secure donating. And it doesn't matter how much, but um, every little bit helps. Please enjoy. So for this next practice, I want to welcome you all to my village hall, which has really been very kind in allowing me to film my, my Pilates practice for you um, in the hall, which uh, obviously allows me a little bit more space and scope. Uh, on the downside, you haven't got Sam's input, but um, I think maybe we'll, uh, we'll just let him stay home on the sofa for this one. So what we're going to be doing today is working with the gym ball. Um, some of the exercises that I'm using with the gym ball, you can adapt to have your, your feet up on a chair. It just takes a little bit of, little bit of um, modifying to do that, but it is possible to do them on the chair. Or you could just do your tilts and your ab curls with your feet on the floor, as in the previous practice that you've done. So if you've got a foam roller, um, you can use your foam roller for the the um, arm weight exercises lying down, but lying on your mat, um, just flat on your mat, is absolutely fine. You will need some um, hand weights. Um, one kilogram, I find, is fine for me. I do go up to one and a half or two kilograms. Gentlemen might like to use their heavier weights. Um, still not about having a very heavy weight, though, because this is, is about joint stability. It's about good mechanics and tone, we're not trying to build muscle. Um, a strap or long scarf or an old belt will be useful, we will just have a little stretch for the hamstrings. Um, so if you don't have any weights you could grab a couple of tins out of your larder um, or if you've got water bottles that you use when you're walking you could um, just put water in those and that will make a little bit of a weight or just work the weights exercises without weights for now. So here we go, we're going to um, start with the ball. So it might be a good idea if you've done your seated practice first for a little bit of warm up for the upper body or you've been walking or doing some other form of exercise before you start. But we're going to go onto the, onto the ball and start with a little bit of um, deep abdominal connection. So this first exercise we're going to be lying semi-supine, we're going to have the legs on the ball and we're going to find that connection between the deep abdominals and the psoas muscle in the front of the hip um, and really sort of work, work on our core, um, integrating the, leg, the legs into that. So you're going to need your gym ball and your mat. So we spend a moment just orientating ourselves on the mat and having a sense of how the weight of the skeleton is, is falling into the floor. So you might notice whether you've got imbalances between one side of the body and the other. So just take time to align yourself um, um, as well as possible because with, with working with the ball, if you are a little bit skew with, then because the ball is unstable and moves, that's only going to sort of increase uh, as you start to move. So make sure, have a little look, make sure you feel that you're square on, that you're happy that the ball is in a good place. And we've got the legs long. We're going to lengthen the arms by the side, we're going to lengthen through the back of the neck. So we're going to take a breath. And on our out breath, we're going to focus on recruiting those deep abdominals there. And as we work the uh, the deep abdominals, we begin to think about how, uh, as a muscular pull, those abdominals can help to initiate 
a movement of the ball towards the body. And as I'm moving, the front of my hip is engaging. The knees come to just in front of the hip bones. Take a pause and another breath to start with, although you could do this just all on one out breath when you're used to the movement. But now on the next out breath, find that support in the center and feel a little floating motion of your tailbone off the mat. Now, I'm in a sweater today as it's chilly, so you may not see this very clearly, but it's like a mini tilt. I'm coming down and rolling out on my in-breath. So on an out-breath, deep abdominal connection, rolling the ball in. I've got a slight press down through my heels just to stabilize the ball and I'm now focusing on my deep abdominals creating a slight floating. So my tailbone just curls off the mat as if a string is pulling my coccyx up between my two knees. Now the danger is pushing too much in the legs on this, which makes it more of a leg exercise. So we're trying to make perhaps as deeper, maybe lazier muscles do the work. So my legs stabilize the ball, then I really focus on the sensation of deep abdominals. And those lower abdominals just very slightly pull the pelvis up off the floor. It's enough that someone can slide a piece of paper under my pelvis come down and roll the ball. Don't be deceived by how simple and small this movement looks. You're really starting at the beginning to make sure that the foundations of your movement are in place before you do the more complex integrated movements. So the backs of my legs feel a little bit as they're switching on to obviously hold the ball towards me. I'm keeping that angle at the hip. Not trying to um, tuck under too much, it's more just sort of as though it's a piece of paper curling up. It's just a slight curl. So that is your ball roll with a tiny lift of the pelvis. It's not really a pelvic tilt, but it is actually going to lead us into our pelvic tilts quite nicely. So there I am. I'm hovering now just above the ground and you might find it that, that you have a slight sway one side or the other. Take note and see what adjustment you might need to make to align yourselves so that hips, knees, feet, shoulders are all aligned. Come down and just rest your legs over the ball and take a moment before we go into pelvic tilt. Slight change of position. I'm going to bring my feet onto the ball. So if you want to do this without your gym ball, you can place your, um, your feet or heels on a chair or on a, um, a sofa, uh, something to give you that positioning, um, and, uh, or just go back to doing it with your feet on the floor. So we're going to take a, a, a big gentle inhale. On our exhale, we recruit that transversus abdominis and we feel that our legs just hold that ball. My feet are feeling the ball. Now I'm using my lower abdominals now to feel that I'm bringing my hip bones slightly towards my ribs and I'm curling up off the mat. So I'm not going to go too high because this is a harder version of my pelvic tuck. Take a breath at the top and on the out breath, I'm allowing the body to descend quite naturally with gravity, using my abdominals almost like a handbrake to just slow down that descent. In breath, out breath, engage the deep abdominals. Use your feet and legs to just hold the ball steady. This is harder because the ball will, will accentuate any deviation that you make from your alignment. So it's quite good at showing you how well you are lining yourself up. So there is a little bit of work for the back of the legs here, but it, you're not producing the pelvic tilt from your legs. That's really just the stability of the ball. It is my abdominals. So my abdominals contract as they shorten and contract. They're pulling the pelvis towards my ribs. And there is this lovely lengthening of the spine supported by that abdominal connection. 
I'm going a little bit higher, but I'm not pushing up through the chest. I'm not really even using the glutes deliberately, but they will kick in a little bit because of the ball. Take a breath and feel that softening of your chest bone, your ribs, finally your pelvis. And make sure that you do feel that, that release at the end. And if you hold the tension, then it tends to build up in a less useful way. So we want that um, feeling of activity and then release. So breathing in, out breath, preparing with the abdominals, feeling the feet, being careful not to let the, um, the chin lift. So we're keeping the spine long. If it wobbles a little bit, then your, your palms on the floor will, will just give you a little bit of support. Take a breath, out breath, rolling down. So this is harder work. You might not want to do 10. Just feel your way with using the ball. Um, the thing is not to fight it, not to feel as though the ball is your enemy. It's very much some part of you, really. So it's there under the feet. Um, a bit of a bridge between you and the floor. So there we have our pelvic tilts. Now you may find that if the back of the legs feels a little bit tight from that, it's useful to just stretch the heel, sole of the foot up to the ceiling. Just move quite slowly, give yourself a bit of time. You might have to stay there a little bit longer if your muscles are tight. I've been doing a lot of walking actually and I know that my hamstrings have definitely tightened up with an increase in that activity. Moving on to the abdominals, particularly the upper abdominals, this feels quite nice to do with the feet up on the ball. Helps to stabilise the lower back. So we're going to take a breath in, supporting the head. On our out breath, draw in the deep abdominals, take the weight of the head, and we're rolling the shoulders and a bit of the upper spine up off the floor. It really is a chest raise, it's a rolling out of the mat. I'm not trying to sit up. In breath to retreat back to the floor. Out breath, engage. Supporting the head, there's, there's definitely that moment where you have to acknowledge how you're taking the weight with your arms. So that of course does fire up the muscles in the arms, but it allows the, the neck to be free. So the abdominals are producing the lift of my upper torso. And my gaze goes to somewhere between my knees, towards the wall. In breath, out breath, engage, and cut. In breath, to come back down. Out breath, engage, cut. Feel how the ribs slide towards the hips. In breath, out breath, lift. You might find it useful to do one or two with your arms reaching gently towards your toes. Sometimes just the thing, the forward movement of the arms starts to train our thoughts towards the full roll-up. But if that's not sensible for you, if you've got neck issues, then keep the movement supported by the hands behind the head. So now we can look at the exercise we did at the beginning, moving the legs in and out, and we can look at the upper body work. We can place the hands behind the legs, and we can start to see how with a little bit more effort in those abs, support from our hands, we can come up into our teaser. So this is a nice teaser because the ball is supporting our legs so it saves too much effort on those hip flexors but don't rush the whole thing is that all of the ingredients that you work on with your pilates all the patience you have with the small movements build together into that jigsaw that is the original mat work series those stronger exercises um, so don't miss out all the connections so we have got the lift of the head. Now I'm using my hands for a little bit of a support. My legs are gently extending, keeping the connection with the ball. Now I keep the bite of my abdominals working 
And as I lift up, I'm going to keep that lower back slightly softened, but I have got my chest lifted. I'm rolling the shoulders down the back. So this position, supported by the ball, gives me some good practice for the full teaser. And use those abdominals on the way down. Try not to tense the legs. Use your abdominals. Build your control. I'm slightly out of sync with the legs there. So here we go. Out breath. Head. Chest. Shoulders. Lift. Squeeze the abdominals. And down. Head. Chest. Shoulders. And lift. So we now become more of a move sequence and it doesn't require masses of strength or masses of flexibility. It's about cleverly using your technique, your basics and the way the movements flow, the way the body connects. So I need that little bit of upper abdominals a little bit of use of my legs, a little bit of use of my arms, and when we when we bring everything into the action in an integrated way, in a balanced way, nothing's overworking, nothing's overstretching. So there we go. That's um, quite a favourite of mine. That one actually, because it's not so strong on the legs. I love working with the ball for that teaser. So there you have your abdominals. So here you have it, everybody. This is your hip roll, and you all love these. In fact, I usually um, um, have to stop you all doing them. You'd go on forever doing your hip rolls. Such a comforting movement, I think, this sort of rocking motion. But we are using it to work our obliques to find that support in our midsection around our lower spine where all our bending and twisting takes place. How does the work that we do for these muscles help to support the tasks that we expect our body to manage for us? Now, the thing about this is it's easy to rely on the arms or to tense the shoulders. We're really thinking about what's going on here particularly down lower into that um, lower part of the abdomen, ab abdomen there. So my legs are hooked quite close. Do have your seat sort of close to the ball and the knees above the hips, feet relaxed, arms relaxed to the side. You can incorporate turning the head. I'm keeping my head straight though for the purposes of this practice. We're going to take a breath in. On the out breath, Engage the deep abdominals and have a sense that this is the driving force here for creating motion with the ball, not the legs, not my arms, it's in here. So as the pelvis begins to rotate, it's like a pair of balance scales just tipping with a downward motion into my right hip. So I'm going to pause and take a breath in, a couple of slow ones, so that on the way back I can re-engage those abdominals and use my tummy muscles to bring the weight of my legs on the ball back to the centre. Inhale, exhale, draw the abdominals in, feel that as the weight tips onto your left buttock, on towards your left hip, there is this sense of diagonal pull that almost feels like a stretch. We explored that on your baby hip rolls in an earlier practice. Watch for tension in the legs, watch for tension in the arms. Channel your energy into that midsection. It's a little bit like bringing out a washcloth. There is that feeling of twist in the centre and it's going deeper into that very sort of um, hub of our belly, right on the inside that the activity takes place. So that kind of on the outside of the body, I'm not working too hard, I'm working deep. The thing about Pilates is I feel that externally, it looks as though the body goes into these movements with such ease and grace. 
And because you can't always see where the effort is taking place, it looks easier than it is. But this is a little bit what dancers are, are working with. They're working with this incredible interior strength because obviously, you know, they, they're creating beautiful shapes, jumps, turns. Similarly, we're, we're actually creating quite a beautiful, graceful motion picture, moving picture on the mat because um, the, the effort is internal. So there we are. We've got our hip rolls. We can in-breath and we can out-breath to rotate. Stay tuned. It is a comforting movement, but, but do just challenge yourself there with the movement. Make sure you're not leaning into the arms. Sometimes I do this holding your, your little soft ball above your chest so that you don't cheat. Today, just keeping it simple. So that's your hip roll. So, with the legs extended, reaching gently through the heels, we are now working for a feeling of elongation here, a feeling of the pelvis lengthening away from the ribs, relaxing and opening the shoulders, palms lengthening towards the feet. You can do this next exercise with your hands cupped around your hip bones there. Um, to gently um, extend that feeling of length. But just for now, we'll place the palms on the floor. So we're going into our bridge on the ball, working the glutes, strong exercise for the glutes, but a really effective exercise for you to be in contact with your whole body, your whole alignment. So we're going to take a breath in on the out breath, engage your abdominals, but now deliberately squeeze your glutes. This feels a little bit like if you had a ball in your hand and your palm was squeezing around a ball, this is the feeling of your glute muscles squeezing around your sit bones. So deliberately squeeze your glutes as you engage your deep abdominals and that will provide for you this sense of uplift so that the driving force of the movement is coming from your glute activation, not the pushing up of your chest, and the pressing down onto the ball is only for stability, that's not really for motion. So for a moment there, I can just feel whether I'm spiraling to one side, am I straight, am I leaning, come down on the in-breath. Be deliberate and thoughtful each repetition rather than just um, like when you drive a car and you feel as though miles have gone by and you don't know where you are. Make sure you know where you are so you stay on the map of the movement. Contract the glutes and the abdominals. Gently press down through the heels to stabilize the ball. Feel a connection through the palms to keep you um, on balance and come down. Take a breath in, squeeze the glutes, engage the abdominals, maybe just squeeze a bit harder. Once you've warmed up, once you've got into it, perhaps you can work a little, a little harder, just challenge the muscles with a little bit more work. doesn't mean that the position will get bigger, more extreme, it just means that you're focusing and making the most of the opportunity to train the muscle. Glutes, I've been told by various of my fellow professionals working in physio and massage, um, often they do tell me that many people have um, relatively weak glutes. I think perhaps the sitting in cars and sitting at computers contributes to that. But it's quite easy, it's quite easy really to, to train those glutes. So, I'm going to now take my arms above here. So, can I do this without the support of my arms? Relaxing the shoulders into the mat, lengthening the back of the neck. Feeling that as I press down through the heels to stabilize the ball, my glutes propel me upwards. And it doesn't matter if you wobble. You know, um, the world won't end if you wobble and you're not going to fall very far if your legs come off the ball. Sometimes you've just got to go for it to see what's possible. So we don't want to be stuck in a rut. We want to find our groove. We want to keep progressing. So take those arms off. Have a go. Worst that can happen is that it wobbles off. 
And we go back, start again. I find that just some days this works better than others. Um, and some days, you know, if you've been doing a heavy task the day before, you've had a, a big lot of exercise, your body might be slightly tight in places, therefore it won't be as even, it won't be as level. So now, palms back on the floor. This next variation um, might not be advisable if you have got knee issues. And in fact, people that have knee issues, you're probably better having a go at your bridge with your feet on the floor in a traditional position. Um, I'm not trying to um, teach through these little practices. This is just to support you in your practice. And as you all know, when you're there in front of me, I'm constantly watching, observing, advising, and um, making um, physical corrections for you. So this, this is not teaching. So just do be careful and mindful of your own practice. So I'm going to go up on the out breath using my glutes to give me the lift. And I take a breath in. On the out breath, I'm going to roll my feet into the ball, flexing at the hip, flexing at the knee to activate the back of my legs. So I'm keeping my torso in the same position, but I'm activating now to use the legs. So it's adding something on. Squeezing the glutes, holding the center. Take a breath, out breath. In breath, out breath. Making sure you're doing this with your muscles and not just forcing into the joints. It's the muscles around the joints that is producing your movement. So there we have it. A little bit of activation. Hamstrings there working to flex the knees. And a lot of core work to keep you balanced. So lifting. Take a breath. Out, exhale. For the strong motion of flexing, take care with the knees here, not to lock, not to push down through the knees. Keep yourself lifted through your glutes, through your core, and down. Uh, now, there's a lot of work there for the back of the legs and the glutes, so we're now going to take a stretch for the glutes. And you might want to have your strap handy for a hamstring stretch. So placing your right heel above your left knee. We're going to use the ball and use the foot that's on the ball to gently bring the legs into a position where we have a stretch on this hip, on this glute of the, of the um, frog's leg, leg. Now be careful not to pull your foot so it doesn't overstretch your ankle. We we'll keep the foot flexed and then we can keep that alignment between the foot and the knee. It might be tempting to lean towards this knee. That will take the stretch off. So come back and centre. If anything, you might want to lean slightly the other way. So this is a nice version of a hip stretch that uh, has the support of the ball. As you know, we do this with just both legs held in the air. But this can be a nice controlled way to stretch the hip. So my lower back and hips allow me quite a bit of movement there. And remember this is a, a visual guide just to give you the essence of the movement. This may look and feel different um, for you when you do this. So we go back to the straight leg position. I put my left foot above my right knee. Remember, it might feel different on each side, so don't automatically expect this to feel the same. It's quite interesting to notice whether um, the stretch feels different. So I get a slightly different stretch. It tends to go more into the hamstring for me on this side, whereas it was more in the glute on the other side. So I tend to just move around a little bit until that stretch. So you might like to just ease off and then go back into it again. It's a good idea to find a place of stretch that feels as though things are releasing it. It does feel as though something is happening, but it's not so strong that it makes you pull away from it. If it's too strong, ease off. If it's not strong enough, 
find a little bit more stretch. So now we're going to take our hamstring stretch and for that we're going to use a strap, a towel or um, a scarf. So with the strap around the ball of my foot, remember don't wind the straps around because that's good for your hands for circulation. I also feel it's very easy to get tight with your shoulders so I prefer to have a longer strap and have my elbows on the floor and use, use just the movement from my elbow and my grip rather than holding up here and using from my shoulders. So I'm going to just exhale and gently take my leg to a place that for me feels um, as though I'm just getting a nice sense of release and stretch. Um, I know you all um, um, scoff at me for using the word nice <laughs> um, and you don't like leg torture as you name it but um, you don't have to do this too strenuously. Um, as long as you're getting uh, a, a good feeling, I'm not going to say a nice, a good feeling, a good feeling, a positive feeling of, of release. A feeling of opening up back of the leg. Um, enough that the rest of the body is relaxed on the floor, you're not gritting your teeth, you're not breaking out into a sweat, um, but you're not going to sleep either. So there we are, we're just feeling that the longer you stay there, holding the same position, the sensation changes and the discomfort eases and it does begin to feel as though you've got more room, as though you've got more room. So, so now, if I take a breath, I now can take that leg a little bit further if I wish. So remember, I'm, I'm certainly not as stretchy um, as I used to be, but I'm still fairly stretchy with my legs. So. Um, a lot of people won't have quite quite the same amount of uh, movement there. You don't need loads of movement. If you can get your leg to 90 degrees, you're doing all right. So we've got the band around the ball of the foot, and we're finding a place that feels as though it's doing some work. But, you know, I'm okay. I can keep smiling with that. That's okay for me. Um, it's doing something. So you may need to stop the video, you might want to spend a bit longer. It's quite good to stay for about 30 seconds in that stretch. And just keep tuning into it. So avoid thinking about the glass of wine tonight. And just stay tuned to what's going on. We do do variations on this, taking the leg into slightly different positions to achieve stretch in different areas of the hamstring. Sometimes we target tightness at the back of the knee. Sometimes we're looking more into the calf. This is just a basic stretch. So once you've held it, take a breath and then see if there is that feeling of give. Will it just go a little bit further? So, there we have it. We're going to take a different position for the next group of exercises. So now we're going over the wall just to do a few repetitions of our arrow and our dog exercise. Because of the um, sort of limit of time with, with the videos, with what we're able to film in any one chunk, you may want to stop the video and just carry on and do a few more. But I wanted to give you a nice variety today. So we're going to go over the ball. Um, make sure your ball isn't too overinflated because it will make you feel a bit less stable. So this feels quite nice for me here. I've got my, my, my hands reach the floor, my feet reach the floor, my knees aren't touching but they're not too far away from the ball. So I'm going to relax my upper body and just let go. It's no need to tense, we're just there, the ball is holding us up and you can just have a little move around to see how that feels. It's quite nice just to rock actually gently forward and back. Now keep your knees soft because if you push into your legs, you're going to be achieving this movement more from, from here, from, 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 the, from the hips, from the glutes. And I want you to work with your um, upper and mid-back now. So the arrow, take a breath. On your out breath, lift your arms level with your torso. Now remember, that's further away now than it was when you were on the floor. On your inhale, lift your torso up so that you feel you are literally like like a dart or an arrow. There's that feeling of squeeze now of my arms, just slightly towards the body line. Now on my next out breath, I'm going to draw the shoulder blades down towards my hips, lengthen the back of the neck, and just feel my way into that shape 
long, lean, strong. Relax back down and don't forget to release the upper body into the ball. Inhale, exhale, the arms lift. Float is perhaps not quite the right word because it is a bit more effort to do that when you're on the ball. So on the exhale, sorry, you lift your arms here. On the inhale, you lift your torso. On the next exhale, draw your shoulder blades down, lengthen, relax, and down. Inhale, exhale, lift those arms, feel the lats engage. Inhale, extend and feel how the upper part of your spine is long and strong. Out through the crown of your head, your coccyx, feet firmly on the floor. Draw the shoulder blades down, relax. It's interesting that people don't always realise how much they've worked with this until afterwards when they really feel they've had a workout. It's quite a lot of work resisting gravity, getting the weight of your body up off the ground. Working the back of the body now. Exhale. So I'm going to do one more, but you might want to do a few extra, so feel free to stop the video. Exhale to lift the arms. Inhale. Lift the upper body. Don't forget your abs are still engaging to support your spine. Exhale, draw those fingertips and shoulder blades down. And relax. On to our dog exercise. So now, my body weight is supported by the ball. I'm going to open my chest, draw the shoulder blades down my back into their home position, lengthen the neck, and make sure the neck is free. Just have a sense of the balance here. You may need your feet tiny bit wider. Take a breath in and don't forget you will need your core. Even though the ball is supporting you, you're on, you're on something that isn't stable. So we're going into our opposite arm and leg raise. Don't be tempted to push into the supporting leg. You're working hard around your midsection. You've got a strong connection, as you had in the previous practice on the video, between your shoulder and your hip, your opposite shoulder and your hip. So we establish on the out breath, we do the effort. It doesn't have to go too high. In breath, to come back in. Out breath, point, and lift. In breath, out breath. Point and lift. Feel the strong activation of your glutes and hamstrings. If your upper body gets a bit weary, just remind the shoulders to stay down your back. If you don't want to take your arm too high, you can just keep your arm a little bit lower, don't strain. Or you could just do the leg work on its own. Absolutely fine. Just feel, keep a bit more stability if you don't fancy the arms as well. Now, stretching the legs out, a little bit of rotation, because I actually left out rotation from the seated practice and it's, it's, um, it's bothered me ever since. So this is a nice way to get some rotation here. So we take a little relaxation first, and then we're coming up on an out breath. Push strongly into your right hand and both the balls of your feet anchored on the mat. And then opening your chest, your armpit, shoulder, feeling the spiral migrate through the whole body, through your spine, through your legs. Nice thing about this is because some of your body weight is taken by the ball, it's not as tense around your shoulder girdle and upper back. So you can explore movement. Now because you're looking up, because you're twisting, some people might feel a little bit sort of vertigo here. So just be careful, you don't have to go too far. You've got a nice wide base with your toes. Now I'm pushing into my left palm, not overextending that elbow, but I'm really lifting out of my left armpit, not sinking into that side. So there we have it. Take a little relaxation. So I'm going to work on my foam roller, which just gives you a little bit of added challenge. Don't recommend the roller though if you have got problems with your spine. It's quite a firm surface to lie on. 
I do quite enjoy it for the weight's work because it allows my shoulder blades to sort of articulate around uh, around the surface. So it's easier for me in a way than being on the mat. Um, but get comfortable on your mat, whether you're working with your weights or perhaps some tins. And uh, we're going to come down into your semi suit. If you're working on the roll, make sure that your head is supported, tailbone, and that you're as level as possible. It's tempting to fix your position by just using your legs there, but really it's, it's round your knee section that you're going to be um, working hard. So this is where the roll is quite useful because you get an um, additional layer of, of work going on in the centre. So, starting off, we've got an exercise that is for the pecs, but what's good about this exercise is that it is working the pecs in tandem with the upper back muscles, so that instead of just overworking and tightening the front of the chest, you're really articulating that movement in a more supportive way, in a balanced way. So starting up on an in-breath, on your out engage those transversus abdominis, and if you're on the floor, you'll find that your elbows probably just touch the floor. On the roll, I'm going a little bit lower because I like to stretch for the pecs, but you don't have to touch the floor. Inhale to lift up. Exhale. You're coming down with care so that the arms and shoulders and the chest and the back are controlling the movement. Now, my grip on the weights is quite light. It's not careless because I don't want to drop the weight on me, but I'm not working my wrist. I'm not wanting to work my gripping muscles. What I'm working here is the front and the back of the chest. I'm working the shoulder, working the arms themselves. So there we go. Out breath and in breath and out breath. Now sometimes, because I've got a very dark, dominant right side, um, it, uh, the, the, the pull does sometimes make me wobble a little bit to one side. So that's why I find the roll is quite useful because I can sort of feel where that imbalance is happening. So enjoy that stretch. Now, rotate. So this position it isn't easy if, um, if you, ha you haven't had experience of classical ballet and ballet arms. But the shape starts in the back and it's a full circle coming round through the upper arm to the fingertips. And this is all quite a sophisticated rotation of the arms, but it's very toning and it's really worth working on this because what it helps to achieve is a correct balance between the stability of your shoulder girdle, the openness of your chest and a nice sense of working the muscles around the elbow, shoulder and the wrist. So here we are, breathing in, and on our out-breath, we are opening to what some of you will know as second position. Now this is, it's, it's quite a lot with your weights in your hands. Your arms are going a long way from the centre of your body, so that means it's harder work to hold. It's like holding bags of shopping away from you when you're loading them into the car. So I can feel my shoulder blades articulating quite happily around the surface of the roller. The nice little stretch there. I can feel the activation of the muscles in the shoulder girdle and the arms as I come back up to the first position. So there we have it. Now you might want to stop the video. You might want to do a few more of those because it does take a little bit of, of uh, concentration to get the shaping correct. I'm going on to triceps. I'm going to hold my weight in my right hand and place the back of my left hand against the elbow. Now again, I'm not symmetrical now, so you, on the roller you may feel less stable. So now, without gripping the weight too hard, I'm holding my elbows exactly in the same place, but I'm flexing. Now it's as I pull that weight back up vertical, that the back of my arm, my tricep, is really targeted. Now most of us probably are stronger with our bicep than our tricep. And this is really very good for getting correct joint positioning, joint motion, joint stability. So it looks 
like a very small, insignificant exercise, but it is very helpful. I'm just doing a few times. I want you to stop the video and carry on. I'm going to go to my left hand now. Give yourself a moment's pause because you just need to establish you know, how does it feel using your left hand. For me, it's odd because I'm right-handed. I usually would do things with my right hand. So in actual fact, I have to, I have to clock on more to use my left side. It's interesting doing a beautiful, beautiful walk yesterday using my walking pole in my left hand and having sound on the lead in my right hand. I was quite aware that it, it isn't a balanced motion. It's not as balanced as walking using two poles. And um, it's good to be aware of these things because then we can do take the right course of action to just um, keep our body balanced with perhaps uh, the right exercises. Same if you've been gardening and digging using one side of your body too much. So that is your triceps there. So I was getting tempted to get quicker as I'm talking to you. So slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. How heavy can you make that weight feel? Because the more heavy it feels to your mind, the more effort and work is going on in your muscle, but in a safe way because it isn't being loaded with a weight that you can't cope with, but your mind can create the sensation. But that is really quite, quite a challenge. So there we have our three um, supine exercises with weights. So after all that concentration, all that individual um, joint work, we're going to just move, we're going to feel our whole body. And it's nice just to have a wriggle, just to squirm and just see how much your body maybe does sort of drop into the floor a little bit more comfortably now after you've exercised. So a little bit sort of rights and lefts, we're going to flex the right arm and the left knee and hip and feel as though your body is bending to the right and then stretch it out as though your arms and legs are reaching to the four corners of the world. And then flex the left elbow and the right and the right and the left and stretch. And really, it doesn't matter if it goes wrong, it goes wrong. It's all learning. It's connection, not perfection. So there we go. We've got flex and stretch. And flex and stretch. Now, bringing the feet up. We took in a previous practice our big hip roll. And anything that involves rotation and spiral can be used quite effectively to get us off the floor. So how can we get ourselves from lying to sitting? I'm going to drop my knees to the left. I'm going to tuck my left elbow in and I'm going to just bring my right arm comfortably round so that it can support me as I come back up to sitting. And I'm going to go back down reversing that procedure, bending my left arm in, letting my body weight my head go down to the floor and then just stretch chin up, knees to the right, bend the right arm, come round and sit. Now, once you get comfortable with that, you can just roll. So, I would say have a go after your gin and tonic tonight, or a cup of glasses of wine, and just see how easy it is when you have communicated and had a dialogue with your body and you've worked it systematically and scientifically, how everything comes together in a beautiful, integrated, whole movement. And that, everybody, is your fourth Pilates home practice. Hope you've enjoyed it. I've loved being here in Crosby um, Village Hall. So, um, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and keep practicing.